uh, 21. This is a punch biopsy. Uh huh. And uh, we see mild inflammation over here with some papillary dermal edema. Good. But I think if we go high power in the epidermis. What's what's wrong with this epidermis? Uh, there is no uh, stratum corneum. Excellent. When the stratum corneum is completely gone, here we see one flake of it that helps us as a clue. But otherwise, when it's completely gone, sometimes our brain ignores that fact at first because it, it doesn't look abnormal. It's missing, right? Sometimes missing structures are harder for our brain, I think, at least my brain, to pick up on than seeing something that's p present and abnormal, obviously. So I think sometimes you don't think about until you're like, wait, where's the stratum corneum? So I think that's important. And so what, what is causing the stratum corneum to be missing here? Uh, can be some uh, bolus disorder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a bolus disorder. And the one clue we have are these detached keratinocytes floating around in what would have been a blister space if the corneal layer had not peeled off. Sometimes if you're lucky, you can look around elsewhere in the slide and you'll find the miss missing stratum corneum. Sometimes it's it's gone and lost during processing. Here we've got a little bit of it. And we can see like it's stratum corneum and a little bit of the granular layer. Again, with detached fragments of keratinocyte there. So that pattern, the main things I think of is when the, the corneal layer is missing and I see evidence of acanthalysis, that means that we have an acanthalytic blistering process and either it's autoimmune, in which case it'd be pemphigus foliaceus, probably, which is what this was. Um, and you would need direct immunofluorescence to confirm that. Um, and then the other things that can look like this would be staph scalded skin syndrome, which will also have acanthalysis and detachment of the corneum. And to me, the, the clinical is quite different for that. But microscopically, in my opinion, pemphigus foliaceus and staph scalded skin can look identical. I, I don't have a reliable way to tell those two apart. And the other thing would be bolus impetigo. Although in bolus impetigo, you usually will have neutrophils and bacteria in the blister space. But if it washed out and, and, and sloughed away, it could look like this. I've also seen times where pemphigus foliaceus had secondary bacterial impetigenization and made me think of bolus impetigo. But in the end, it ended up being confirmed by DIF. Uh, direct immunofluorescence that it was actually foliaceous. So I think it's good to keep those three things in mind when you have the missing stratum corneum or a subcorneal split with acanthalysis. So this was pemphigus foliaceous. Good job.